Yeah, one of the questions you know that you may have uh, that I may have missed in the uh, first two history videos is the the answer to the question of why do I have all this IP to begin with? How did it happen? Well, uh, and why am I stuck with it and everything else? Well, the reason I have all this IP is that I had always planned on exploiting it myself. But I, I, I had this theory, this business theory called the snowball effect. You know, and the theory was is that if you can get up enough money to start putting products out of the market, you can take the products, uh, the many of the profits and proceeds from those products and introduce more products. And then eventually I can start hiring in people to help me out do that. Um, you know, engineers, product developers, etc. And start multiplying my efforts. And then we can start putting more and more products and build up like a snowball and take it out to market. And again, certainly in the pre-internet days, that was a good theory. I had a whole elaborate plan on how to do it. The problem was I could just never quite get my snowball built. Uh, I, I just could never get up to that level, even to where I was a millionaire, let alone, you know, um, better than that, you know, to where, I, you know, where I could really get serious about putting products out on the market. It just didn't happen. You know, I just couldn't quite get there. So... <clears throat> And, you know, with the, everything changing, thanks to the Chinese and the Internet and all that stuff, that really substantially stood in my way uh, to making anything like that happen. But anyway, that's why for years, though, I just wrote down every freaking invention I could think of. I and mean, I was very a uh, adamant about that, um, with the expectation that one day I might be able to exploit it um, all myself. That's why I have so much IP, and I've never really tried liquidating it. Um, and again, for like the last you know, eight or ten years, you know, it's been my intent to kind of sell it off. Um, but again, I still thought I was going to have to be a millionaire to do it. So, um, that's why I've aggregated so much of it, you know. Um, again, early on, and, uh, you know, I, I really thought it realistic to actually uh, exploit it myself, but I could just never get to that minimal level to actually really start putting consumer level products out of the market. <clears throat> um, you know, because ever, ever since, uh, uh, you know, again, my backstabbing employee stabbed me in the back and then the fire and all that crap happened, I've just not been able to get on my feet. I've been paralyzed ever since, just totally paralyzed. Um, and, and pursuing pipe dreams, really, trying to get back on my feet, trying to figure out how the hell I can become even a millionaire, even just to sell off my IP. You know, I thought it was going to have to be a millionaire just to do that, let alone put products out of the market. I mean, that's why I gave up on that, you know, really uh, near, nearly, you know, eight or ten years ago. Um, you know, I gave up on that dream. But I still thought, well, if I could just become a millionaire uh, and, and get to the point to where I could, you know, afford a patent a lot of this stuff and actually develop it and all that jazz, well, maybe I can at least sell some of it off and, 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 and do that. So... Uh, again, that's just kind of how it's all aggregated. It's, it's just been, you know, me just being being thrown over the last uh, over decade into progressively worse situations and trying to deal with it, um, but still aggregating the IP every step of the way. So, at, at, but at the end of the day, that is kind of where you know and why uh, I've accumulated so much, you know, such a big list of inventions. Um, and concepts and product ideas and all that. It's, it's just for that uh, situation, but just everything was changing on me in the world and how it works and just, you know, again, the Chinese entering the market, that really threw me into a bad situation because it kind of leveled the playing field. See, back in the old economy, you know, there was just kind of this rule, you know, the big corporations were the ones you had to worry about, but they were so slow behemoths, you know, smaller, smaller companies could outmaneuver them. So the fact of the matter is, is that they were slow to react, and because of that, they were actually easy to kind of dance around and get your stuff out on the market and not have to worry about it. You know, these days, you know, you come with a good product idea and put it out on the market, you're going to have 50 Chinese companies coming in and copycatting you for half your price, you know, uh, within six months. So, I mean, at the, at the end of the day, you know, it just doesn't work well anymore, even if you have your products made in China, you got to worry about that. So, I mean, at the end of the day, it, it just isn't there anymore. I mean, it's just impossible to freaking, you know, America is not the, the land of milk and honey it used to be, for especially for people like me. 
uh, and people that want to start up out of their garage and actually have a chance or a prayer of pulling themselves up by their own bootstraps, that's almost undoable this day, this day and age, especially with any kind of actual product. So you come up with some kind of internet scam or some crap like that, yeah, you can still make some money, but that's about the only opportunity left. And frankly, I don't think in terms of scams. So, you know, at the end of the day, I mean, for people like me that are real innovators and creators out there, we're pretty much off in the cold. You know, uh, you know, the only option we got, you know, go out and put something, you know, out on Kickstarter or whatever is an exercise in futility. Um, because frankly, that's what everybody's doing at this point. And because of that, you know, have you ever looked at the internet lately? Um, especially lately, uh, there is so much garbage out there, nobody, your market will never find you. You know, especially if advertising on the internet is your only recourse. Good freaking luck even breaking even on whatever it is you're trying to put out of the market. And, and that's saying a lot given the fact that, the, the, again, it's never been easier before in history, you know, to take an idea from concept to production, you know, uh, thanks to the Chinese, Kickstarter, and all that crap, and actually get it out of the market. It's never been easier before, uh, before in history. Um, but yet, good luck if you break even. You know, and that's what it's boiled down to because it's become so much, the internet and everything is so crowded with such garbage, nobody's ever going to find you, not in significant numbers. You know, you're never going to reach your target market. You know, it's too crowded because that's what everybody, the two, you know, pet puppies are doing, you know, at the end of the day. And that's one of the reasons I hate the maker movement so much. That's why I was going on such a rant about it and that, uh, you know, uh, you know, my first uh, biography video, you know, because it does kind of rub me the wrong way, and it's, but it's that, and it's a whole bunch of things that have made this happen, and as a result, there's so much gut clutter and garbage out there, good luck being noticed, very few of those guys are ever going to actually make any real money out of it at all, um, most of them are going to be lucky to pay their, you know, their, their gas bill out of it, uh, and most of them are probably going to go broke in the process, because frankly, they're just not going to get the attention. <clears throat> my God, I don't envy what they have to do to actually generate sales out there. You know, go out and pretend like they're friends with 50,000 people on Facebook or what the hell ever. I mean, that's just a bunch of BS. You know, it just is. I mean, that's just a real nightmare today compared to what it was 20 years ago. I mean, 20 years ago, you could really start up in a garage, you know, and actually make a good innovative product and actually go out there and start selling it on a local level and have it kind of start growing from there. Because on a local level, you know, you start getting enough money together to start taking it to, you know, the state level and then ultimately the national level. And by that time, you've gotten your feet really going in business. So, you know, you can have good protection and you don't have to worry about the Chinese coming directly onto our markets like they do today uh, through channels such as Amazon and, hell, even just directly, you know, practically. That's, that's, that's happening. Um, again, that stuff's kind of what wiped out what I was doing before on all my uh, LED sign technologies, just, just history, because of those, those forces that work, and they're affecting more and more industries every day. You know, it's really alarming. we got a good, you know, do-nothing-about-it do government, so, you know, at the end of the day, we're just sitting here vulnerable, and uh, that's where the, all the opportunity's gone. That's why I don't look at America as the land of milk and honey that it used to be, you know, 20-some-odd years ago in the pre-internet days, but that's what happened. You know, you had the big uh, Chinese price wars, you know, back in the late 90s, uh, which was, you know, China competing with Korea and everything else, which I may have discussed a little bit, um, but that's that's what made China not only cheaper, but there was a reason for it, and that's the internet. It was the internet at first started shaking things up on the local level, um, and then that went to the national level very quickly. Uh, um, you know, in terms of, uh, you know, a company that normally wouldn't have had to compete with anybody except maybe in the next town now has to compete with everybody in the country. Then all of a sudden they had to compete with everybody overseas too. And that's what happened to us. Now, that's what happened to us. You know, our industry just, just bit the dust, you know, uh, over that, you know, in the industrial uh, electronics uh, ser service and assembly business. <clears throat> you know, it just went out down the tubes. Um, um, so, I mean, at the end of the day, you know, that's actually happened to me twice uh, because of the Chinese and the Internet and all this stuff. And that's what really has, you know, uh, has led to the collapse of opportunity. And there are far more ways to actually make a good living for yourself in America 20 years ago than there are today. You know, like I said, if you're good at Internet scams, you know, uh, then great, you know. Uh, but I just look at most of these little dot-coms 
people trying to get a couple of bucks a month out of you. I mean, really, it's that's like a, that's the internet equivalent of beggars on the street today compared to the business opportunities that used to be available to everybody 20 years ago. But they required skill and effort and real work to actually make them happen. You know, if you want to pull yourself up by your own bootstraps, there was a lot of work in that, a lot of real work and a lot of real stuff you had to learn. And these days, it's just not that way. You know, oh, let's go out to YouTube and, you know, crowdsource everything on top of that that we don't know. You know, on YouTube, we'll learn, you know, some of what we don't know and crowdsource the rest of it, right? So, I mean, at the end of the day, this is just, you know, I just can't emphasize enough how this turns my stomach. But at any rate, you know, that's just a little, um, you know, glimpse into the reason why I have so much IP and why I'm trying to liquidate it. I'm trying to liquidate it while, while the liquidating is good. Because I still have a, a good pile of IP here, but 10 years, it may dwindle down to nothing if I don't do something with it. So, that's why I like setting the concept of me going out and about getting some kind of clock punching job, you know, as a hired to invent role, by the way, and saving up my money for four or five years, and then coming back, what, and trying to do something with it again? I'm getting too old to be doing that kind of crap. Uh, this kind of crap. I can't. I mean, I, I don't have any retirement savings or anything. I can't be playing games like this much longer. So, I, I mean, I, I, I couldn't do it just from that aspect, let alone the fact that in five years, I mean, I have any of my IP left. So, this is the only thing I can do. It just really is. You know, um, you know, at the end of the day, it really is my only choice, you know, is to try to um, go out and do what I'm doing right now. That's why it's a, it's a Hail Mary for me. It's it's an in-game strategy. It, it's just, you know, there, there's really simply no other option available to me except this. Because it's this or oblivion, you know, as far as I'm concerned. There, there's really, you know, there's no other way I can try to make good on, on this whole odyssey, which is... <clears throat> like I said, cost me so very, very dearly. Uh, and so at the end of the day, you know, there's just simply nothing else I can do but this. And if this fails, well, you know, so much for all that. You know, what a waste of time.